Today I am going to walk you through how to become a digital nomad and start traveling the world. Hey there and welcome. If you don't know me, my name is Taylor. And if you're watching this, that means that you are interested in becoming a digital nomad. So why should you listen to me? <laughs> why does this random stranger on YouTube matter to you? Although my entire channel is full of travel and digital nomad tips, but just to add to that, to let you know, I have been advising different types of travelers for over 10 years now, and I have been a digital nomad myself for the last four years. The first three years I spent traveling solo by myself around the world, house sitting quite a bit while I was doing that. And then for the last year, I have been working with Hacker Paradise as a group trip facilitator. So I've been leading groups around the world of remote workers for the last year. So during this time, I have encountered hundreds of different types of travelers and people and nomads. And I am bringing you today my top tips on how you can become a digital nomad and start traveling the world. And if you like what I have to say today, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button down below. You can also check out a link where you can work with me directly if you need a little bit more support and getting started on your digital nomad journey. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right in. So tip number one I have for you is you need to know what your why is. You need to know why you want to become a digital nomad, whether part-time or full-time, whatever that looks like for you, because being a digital nomad is not a job. <laughs> From the searches online, you would think that it's a job, but it's not, it's actually a lifestyle. And for many people, this requires a lifestyle transformation. So you need to understand what is fueling your desire for that transformation. So you need to think about what you want, why you want it, why it's important to you right now to do this and what you need to change in your life to actually start achieving this goal. Okay. So that's tip number one is to sit down and understand what your why is and understand what your fears are so that you can start working through them. Okay. So then a tip number two is you need to decide how you want to travel, right? So if your main experience right now is just mainly vacations, taking a break from work and going on short, you know, three day to 10 day vacations, then this might be a bit challenging to wrap your head around, but there are so many different ways that you can actually travel and be a nomad. So you can be a full-time nomad, which just means you don't have a home at all and you're just constantly going around the world in different places. You could be a part-time nomad where maybe you do keep your apartment or a home base and you just travel for three to six months out of the year. Maybe you do van life. Maybe you, your home is in your car and your van and that's how you get around the world. Other ways that you can travel are through house sitting, which I mentioned, that's how I actually travel the first three years around the world. I just bounce from house sit to house sit. And I have a bunch of videos on how to get started in house sitting that you're welcome to go watch after this. I'll put the link to the playlist down in the description below. Um, some other options that you consider are co-living houses. So right now I'm actually staying in Outside, which is a co-living company. So they have places all over the world. So that's one that you can consider. There's so many co-living companies at this point. So, and houses all over the world, but that is one option. You could do group travel. You could travel with a group like Hacker Paradise, or Remote Year, or Wi-Fi Tribe. You could stay in Airbnbs. You can stay in hostels if you wanna travel more on a budget and do the backpack style of traveling. There are so many different ways to find accommodation and move around from place to place. And maybe you wanna do a combo of all of these and that's fine too. But just start to think about how often do you wanna travel and what kind of traveler do you want to be? On top of that, start to think more long-term. So are you doing this just for a few months to test it out? Do you plan on doing this indefinitely? Do you have a five-year plan maybe? Do you wanna travel solo? Do you wanna travel with a partner? Do you wanna travel with groups? There are again, so many different choices and I definitely encourage you to start researching and looking into the different ways that you can be a digital nomad because I say all the time, but there's no right or wrong way to be a digital nomad. There's just what works for you. So be sure you put some thought and effort into deciding what works for you. And also know that it's okay to change as you go along. One way is not gonna work forever. Most nomads actually change how they travel over time. 
then the next thing that you need to do before you ever even get started is know what your income is. So how are you making money while you are traveling the world? And this is where, when you start to look at digital nomads, so many of the courses and creators and things out there are geared towards how to make money online, which is very important. But maybe you already have that figured out. Maybe you already have the remote job. You just don't know how to do the next step. So go through points one and two that I just went over. Um, but also maybe you're trying to freelance. That's one way that you can support yourself when you're on the road. You can become an online business owner, um, an entrepreneur, having a coaching business, a social media agency. Um, yeah, honestly, there's so much. You could have an e-commerce store. There's gazillion things that people do to make money online. So if you don't have that figured out yet, again, start to think about what's your skill set and how are you actually going to start doing this? Now, the, the online money piece, if you don't have it figured out yet, might actually delay um, how soon you can get started in this lifestyle, but it's a very, very important piece to it all. Um, also, once you have that figured out and once you've decided what kind of traveler you wanna be, then you can actually figure out what your budget needs to look like as well as what is gonna be your income goal for each, each month. So maybe you're freelancing, but you want to supplement doing something else. Or maybe you have, you know, you're a fully remote employee, but you're trying to build your business on the side. That's fine, um, but just know start to get an idea of how much money you're going to need per month um, for income, especially if say you do have a home base and you still have to pay rent, you know, are you gonna sublet that out? Are you gonna lease it out? Um, or are you gonna just gonna keep it and keep paying rent while you travel? Your budget's gonna need to be a lot bigger if you choose to go that route versus say, selling your house and then just traveling full time, right? So start thinking through some of these different scenarios and figuring out what works for you and your budget, and then make sure you have the income goal to match it. Once you know your why, once you figured out how you actually want to get started at traveling, once you figured out your income piece, then start creating a timeline. So for me, this took about eight months, which it's quite a bit of time. It's not going to take everyone this amount of time. And in some cases it might take you longer. That's okay. Just start thinking about what steps do you need to take to get to where you want to be and start figuring out how long that's going to take you. So for me, that looked like quitting my job, building my freelance business, and then getting the visa that I needed to for New Zealand and before I actually flew. So the biggest part of all of that was building my freelance business so that I could quit my job. And then once I quit my job, then I got like a part-time job while I continued to build my virtual assistant business until it was fully able to just like be my sole income. But that took me a while to do that. You may already be a little bit further along. I had to transition to the remote work aspect of it. Um, but again, just think about you. Think about your timeline. Are you in an apartment lease? You know, does it have one month left? Does it have six months left? If it has six months, what are you gonna do about those last six months? You can sublet, you can break your lease, or you can just wait six months and get yourself set up and ready to go. Things like that. So just start thinking about your timeline specifically and when you think you're gonna be ready to take the leap. So now you know your why, you know your how, now you have to decide where, <laughs> where are you gonna go? <laughs> so I think most people think of the typical digital nomad destinations like Bali or Thailand or Vietnam. Um, but really at this point, there's nomads all over the world. There are communities in Lisbon, there are communities in Medellin, there are communities in Cape Town, South Africa. So no matter where you want to go, you can probably find a community when you get there. So just start thinking about maybe make a list of the things that you enjoy when you travel. Maybe the beach is not your thing. Maybe surfing is not your thing. Maybe you love cities and, and food and, and history and culture. Okay, well then Mexico City might be one of the better locations for you to start than to start, say, in Vietnam on a beach. That's really not that interesting to you, right? So just start thinking about this. Just because that's where nomads go, that's what you hear of, it doesn't mean that's where you actually have to start. I personally, I'm not a fan of the Bali and the Thailand and the Vietnam. That's just not me. That's not where 
I enjoy spending my time. I'm happy that I visit those places. And I might go back in the future, sure. And there are great nomad communities there, but that doesn't mean that it's right for everybody. So start making that list. What do you like to do when you travel? Where do you want to experience? And where do you actually want to go? Also keep in mind that you don't want to be just like flying around the world. That's not practical. You don't want to go from Vietnam to Portugal to Mexico over like a three month period. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Why you want to stay sort of like regional. So maybe you go to Mexico for three months and then you fly down to stay Peru to go hang out in Lima for a bit or Cusco. And then you want to go check out Colombia. So you hang out there, right? That's, that's a much better um, trip rotation than it would be to go like from continent to continent. So just think about that as you start planning as well. Maybe your first three months, like kind of what region do you want to be in? Also in this time, you want to start researching visas and get an idea of what visas you're going to need for different countries. A lot of this is based on your personal passport. So it's kind of hard to give advice in this video, but just be sure you do that research. I'll put a link down to a really good website below that will tell you what you need for each destination. And I kind of mentioned community a bit, um, but definitely like consider the different communities and locations. So if you are just getting started and maybe you are doing it solo, I would maybe tend to pick places that already have maybe an expat or a nomad community. It's going to help you get started a little bit faster. Um, and maybe you even want to start out joining a group trip like Hacker Paradise or Wi-Fi Tribe just to kind of get your foot in the door, learn from other people really quickly and start building that community on your own. Another thing you can consider too is also just like picking a destination where you have family or friends. It doesn't mean you're moving there. It doesn't mean you have to stay forever, but sometimes being in places where you already have one person that you know can really make a big difference. And so when you're thinking about where you want to go, you know, don't, don't discount those locations and maybe, maybe get those a consideration. Okay. So at this point you are on a roll, you're doing so good. The next thing that you need to do is start making some plants, right? We've kind of gone through the, a lot of this thought process and like, you know, the practical steps to getting your life together to make this transition, but it will not be real until you make some actual plans. So that is, booking an accommodation. This is booking a flight. This is applying for your visa. For me, I applied for my New Zealand visa. And then once I got it, there was like a time limit on when I had to actually enter. So then I was like, well, okay, like, I guess I'll book my flight. <laughs> um, and I ended up booking it right after mother's day because I knew my mom would be sad. So those were kind of like my considerations when I first got started. But you start making those plans and then things start to feel a bit more real and you have a bit more like real deadlines. So once you've kind of figured out all these first steps, that's going to be the next step is to make some real plans. And then lastly, you just have to go, you just have to like go and do it and try it and see if you like it. And if you don't like it, maybe change the way that you travel. If you don't like it, that's also okay. You can always go back home. You can always go get another apartment. You can always move to a place that you want to be maybe full time instead of traveling the world. I think one of the, the things that it's actually best is to give yourself per permission to not like it because otherwise you're putting so much pressure on this experience and this transition. And maybe you've told a ton of people that you're doing this thing and you feel embarrassed if you go back on your word. But I think it's okay if you do it and try it and decide you don't like it. That's okay. And just remember, this is your journey. This is your digital nomad lifestyle. You get to decide what that looks like for you and you get to make it what you want of it. So there you go. Those are my steps to how you can become a digital nomad and start traveling the world. Again, I am traveling Taylor. You can find a link down below on how to work with me directly. If you want to want a little bit more support on actually getting started. Thank you so much for being here and watching this video and be sure to like and subscribe down below and I will see you next week.